Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name's Thomas, and this is Zarbo Audio Projects. Today, we're going to take a look at the TDM 157 preamplifier board made by Team Pi or Tenda Electronics. I purchased this unit from AliExpress, and there are several sellers on that site that offer similar units. It's also available in other voltages, but this particular unit operates on 12 volts. AliExpress has them ranging anywhere from about $16 to $25 shipped. First, I'll show you how it works, and then we'll go over all the features, and then I'll give you my opinion on it. So let's dig in. Here the unit's already on, but to show you how you can turn it on and off with the remote, you go to the, the mute button, press and hold, that will turn it either on or off. On the unit itself, you press and hold the volume button and that will turn the unit on. If you insert a card or a USB flash drive into either of the sockets, it will revert to that as the next method of playing. As you see, if I put in an SD card, it will automatically start playing from that. As far as hooking up Bluetooth, let me show that to you. Bluetooth. I'm going to turn Bluetooth on. I'm going to ch press the mode button. Change to Bluetooth mode. Press that. It says it's not connected. I'm going to scan for devices. And now it connected. Done. So you see it's connected to Bluetooth. Now let me play uh, a song from Bluetooth. Turn the volume up a bit. I have it at probably 80%. Turn the volume up just a bit, just so you can hear it. Now when you're in Bluetooth mode, you really can't do a lot with this. You can press pause, and you see it jams up on my phone. So I actually have to hit mode again, go to Bluetooth, hit it, it says it's not connected, then it's connected, and then I press play. So at least on my phone, I have an Android, but at least on my phone, pressing pause on this just sort of makes it crash. So if you're going to pause the song, I would say pause it on your phone, and then just do it that way. So that's Bluetooth. Now let's change modes to USB drive here. So we scroll, you can scroll through all that to the USB drive, click on that, and it loads up the songs. I hit the folder button again. You can scroll down and play different songs. Now it shows you, this is song four of five on this drive here. It also says four or five here. The rock, that indicates that it's in the EQ mode of rock. There are several, jazz classical, I think, a few other ones. That symbol there shows that you're playing from a USB drive and it's an MP3 file format and it's 320 kilobytes per second. And you can also do this from the remote. Press the, um, the fast forward or next button. Go to the next song and when you're in that song, if you press and hold the fast forward button, that's how you fast forward. If you press it once, it goes to the next track. If you press and hold, it fast forwards like you would expect. Same with the remote. I'm going to press and hold the fast forward button, and it fast forwards. So that's the USB. Let's change modes, which you can also do on the remote, and we'll switch to the SD card and you press that. Again, it picked up where it left off because I've already used, uh, I've already had the SD card in there. So we press the folder button. Well, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five songs in there that are music. You press the folder button again, you go, up button, the up arrow, press that, 
and that gets you to the root, to the very basic of what's in this uh, SD card. Now I have a file called um, Folder 1, Folder 2, and Folder 3. Let's go to Folder 1, just to show you how this works. Now I have, in Folder 1, I have Track 1, 2, and 3. Let's just hit Track 2. File one, track two. File here it's saying file one track file two. One, track so the different while I'm here, the different uh, options three, for folder. File two, uh, repeat. You can repeat the folder. File you can two, randomize the songs. Three, you can repeat all the songs. Two, you can repeat one song. One, you could do intro one, mode, which intro one, mode is about one, seven or eight one, seconds, and then it goes to the next track. File just to show you, see seven or eight one, seconds, one, then it goes to the next track. So let's get out of intro mode and go to normal mode so I can have an easier time explaining this stuff to you. So I kind of showed you how this works and this works and these both sort of work the same. So let's go to or let's go to auxiliary. So for auxiliary I'm going to use my phone again. I have it plugged in but this time it's just going to be used as uh, not Bluetooth. And I'll show you. I turned the Bluetooth off so there's no Bluetooth. So what I have, I'll go into my folder here, and I'll just play a song. I have a bad connection, but it's playing uh, from the from the line in. And you don't have any functions here at all with that. The only thing you do, if you press pause, it turns the mute on. It can't pause it because it doesn't know how to tell this to pause. All it can do is press the mute on. So that's how that works. And you can also mute by pressing that and then pressing it again. A short press mutes, a long press will actually turn it off. So I'll get out of that mood and we will go, we'll scroll to the FM mode and then press that. I'm going to turn that way down because I don't want any content matches. But what you can do is you can record in the FM mode and that button is right here and I'm going to press it and it says please wait and then you can see the LED lights flashing so it's actually recording and it records 128 bits per second so let me hit it again and it's paused and let me hit it again and then it actually transfers it to either this or this I'm not sure I guess it's the USB because that's lit up so let me so that's actually playing the, fo the file that we just created there so we just played it and I will show you what it looks like on the, uh, the USB drive itself to show you what that looks like but it records, I think it's in stereo, it's 128 bits per second MP3 when it records from the radio. And I do have an antenna aerial hooked up to my radio here. So let's go, I say line in, FM mode, let's go to that. And let's just um, turn the volume way down because I don't want to get in trouble, I apologize for that. There is music playing even if you can't hear it. So I'm going to scroll over when you adjust the dial here to the right it goes up to the next uh, available um, location and then when you press down it goes to the next available location you can spin it fast and it really doesn't go too fast um, the other thing you can do is you can press the um, next button which would be like next track if you press that it goes to the next pre-programmed radio station so these are I've already pre-programmed these and I'm going to show you how we do that now. So you press this and you can either go to a channel and then save that channel by pressing it and then it saves it as one of your saved channels or you can do an auto search. If you do an auto search and press that it's going to start at the beginning and go through all of the bands in the FM dial and it and it's going to stop real quickly at each one of the um, stations for a split second, maybe a second, and then it's going to search for the next one. I'm not exactly sure how many it gets because I don't know how many radio stations I have available in my neck of the woods, but it's um, probably like 20 or something like that. Um, I can put the exact number in there if I learn that it's different. But it takes a little while to do this. It goes through all the stations, and I'll sort of fast forward through this so you don't have to sit through all of it. So you can see right now that, that that's channel one. If I go back, it's going to go to the last one 
at the top of the band which is 26 so you have at least 26 stations there that you can go to now these are the pre-programmed ones now if you like I said if you just scroll down with the knob like this you're gonna to go to the next available station on the dial not the next available station well the next station that's that's actually there numerically wise it's gonna go this one goes from point three to point two point one point oh but if you hit the down or track down button here it'll go to the next station that you uh, that auto programmed and it's the same thing on the dial here if you press the, the, the down track button here it'll go to the next pre-programmed radio station and to be honest with you the quality of the radio stations as they come in it's not that bad I don't know if this would work in a car but for having something for home um, to be able to even get 20 something 25 or 6 stations at all where I live is, is something and I have about a 2 foot antenna roughly wired right into this and so let's talk about um, the uh, some of the buttons on the remote we well, have the same folder button here that you have on the face on the face panel that's actually that one this repeat uh, button here you have that same one it works the same way um, you have play pause track up and down and the play pause button on the remote they also have stop on the faceplate that you do not have on the remote stop stops the song and resets it so when you press play again you're coming from the beginning whereas you can't do it on this you would just press the pause button and then press the pause button again if you needed to stop it this little arrow that's going up and this little arrow that's going down those are the volume volume up volume down one little thing about the volume when you turn the volume up volume goes up real fast when you turn it down it goes a little slower or at least it, it had it seems to go up real quick but then when you turn it down fast it takes a little bit longer to go down uh, that's not a problem I just noticed that so I figured that I would mention it to you the EQ button there is no EQ button on the faceplate itself the EQ button is only on the remote so when you press the EQ button it gives you different uh, presets jazz classic and you can see it listed up here as well classical normal I guess that's no EQ pop rock rock to me sounds a little bit like bass boost so that sounds better to my ears because I always like a little more bass jazz that doesn't sound too bad either um, I'll just go back to um, to normal which is no EQ at all now what do the buttons do on the remote the one or zero through nine buttons what do they do on the remote let me press two it says input nums two so it went to track two on this on this folder let me press uh, four I'll press number four here so it went to track four on this folder let me press nine okay so I guess when you direct entry buttons when you use those it takes you to the next song it treats the um, the disc as just one folder let me press one yeah it seems to sort of treat it more randomly when you press direct entry buttons from 0 to 18 well let's see what other features we have on here so let's press the mode button and see we have system settings so what system settings do we have well, we have language English Arabic Japanese Korean Russian, simple Chinese, French, German, and a whole bunch of other ones. I'm not going to go through all of them. Let me get back to English so I have some chance of working this thing. You can adjust the contrast. It's kind of hard to see what that's actually doing until I go back. But let me turn it down and then press it. And you can see how poor the contrast actually is. So I'll bump that back up to something that's pretty high and then you can see the contrast is very strong again go down to version this is team pi 
Doc 39. That went away pretty quick. Couldn't even read it. Thanks, Team Pie. And then exit. So there really isn't an awful lot there. You can adjust the contrast and you can adjust the language. There are a lot of languages though, so that's good. So those are the things that you can select. System settings. You can go from the USB. It says record player. So you can play from it and record to it. SD record player. So you can play from and record to the SD card. Bluetooth, which we looked at. Auxiliary, which we looked at. FM mode, which we looked at. And the system settings. And that's about it. Well, now that we've seen how this unit works, let's talk a little bit more about it. First off, this unit is very quiet in operation. I didn't notice any pops or clicks coming from this at all, even when changing inputs. The only time it made a pop sound was when I unplugged the power supply instead of turning it off accidentally. Other than that, it was happily and surprisingly pop free. The sound quality. Yeah, it's hard to relay sound quality through a video, as I'm sure you know. Some of these small preamp boards tend to be a little noisy or sound sort of tinny, but this one has actually pretty good sound quality. I'm not sure I would quite use this as a preamp for my main stereo system in my house, but for a table radio, which is what this would likely be used for, I'd say the sound quality is totally acceptable. Navigating the features seems fairly logical as well. I'm not super tech oriented, so I can get a little frustrated by devices that are less than intuitive, but this one seems pretty easy to understand and work through. There were a few glitches though. Twice while I was testing this, it totally froze up. I couldn't even get it to turn off. I had to cut the power to it to get it to reset. That's not totally uncommon. I've had to do the same thing with my car stereo a few times, unfortunately, but I just wanted to mention it. So to reiterate, the Pros has pretty good sound quality. It's got knobs, which I totally love. That's what made me buy this in the first place. It's relatively noise free. Pretty good FM tuner it has that holds stations in the memory even when powered off and even when unplugged from power. It plays multiple audio files like MP3, WMA, WAV, FLAC, ACC. It's not very deep size wise and it has a pretty low current draw. The TDM157 unit drew about 40 milliamps when it was in the off state, about 60 milliamps when it was turned on, and about 70 milliamps while it was playing music. The cons? Just a few. The remote, it's one of these card style remotes with a coin battery and although this does have rubber buttons and not that awful plastic membrane surface that the real cheap remotes use, but still I always prefer one of these two AAA battery powered remotes. So there were a few glitches in its operation as I mentioned previously, but overall this is a really good preamplifier. I love the fact that it has knobs to control it very few of these do and in my opinion it performs well enough that I think I can create a fairly high-end table radio with it which is exactly what I have planned for this so stay tuned for that project coming in the near future well that's it for today thanks for watching and we'll see you next time bye now